One of the key things that we need for archaeobotanical research is a good comparative collection of modern reference material. And so one of the jobs of the archaeobotanist is, is to do some modern botany, some botanizing, and some plant collecting. And for that, we need to have a plant press of some sort, uh, the filling of which is simply cardboard, newspaper, and plant specimens we've collected. Um, so in the field, ideally, what you, the kinds of plant parts that you want are things like the seeds, which are very important for archaeobotanical collection, uh, but also the other parts of the plants, the herbaceous parts, the greenery and so forth, may be important uh, for processing phytolith reference samples. And in some cases, if you're working on a wood reference collection, you may want to cut small limbs off trees, uh, for example, with a saw. Um, but for your typical plant collection, the important thing to keep in mind is that you're collecting a voucher specimen. So, for example, if we take this uh, very common uh, North African wildflower, uh, also a common weed along field edges and quite likely a agricultural weed in antiquity. Um, the orange flowers are very distinctive. They have this capitulum head, typical of the uh, composites of the Asteraceae family, um, and they produce uh, typical uh, fruits that are sort of curled and have a spiny pattern on them. Those are not yet mature. Um, and so we can, we can identify this as being Calendula algeriensis. Um, but of course, there are two reasons to collect a plant specimen. One is, if you don't know what the plant is when you're in the field, you can take it back, consult uh, botanical experts, consult herbarium specimens that already exist, or take the, the time, uh, take quite a bit of time to key it out and identify the species. But also, even if you know what it is, it's important to bring back a voucher specimen to document the species that you've uh, collected and to make sure that it's correct. So for example, with this species, to, to properly document it, you want to make sure that you try to collect as many of the plant parts as possible. So the flowers, uh, the leaves, so that you can see that in this case you've got alternate small, simple alternate leaves, and also uh, the branching pattern of the overall stem of the plant. So you'd want to collect something like this uh, down there. But of course, we're not getting very many seeds here. There's a few, there's an old seed head here. So you'd want to find, if possible, examples that have uh, the seeds as well. And very often, uh, if plants are in flower, um, there may be some slightly older flowers that have already turned into seed, and you can take those off of other individuals in the same area. Such as, here we have some seeds that have formed. Um, now, uh, you want to add these to your plant press. So you loosen up your parts, open the press, probably on a level area, and then squash your plant between a couple pieces of newspaper. So you the newspaper. Now, in pressing a plant, um, it can be a real art form. It can also simply be functional. Uh, but what you want to try to do is get as many of the plant parts sort of showing their best side as possible. So with things like this, where you've got nice, lots of nice flowers, um, you want to open some flowers up so that you'll be able to see the inside very easily once they're pressed and look at the floral parts, which are helpful for identification. And you want to try to make sure that your various leaves are flat. Now, of course, it's important to record what you're doing. And so you want to give your plant a number um, in a collection sequence and then make notes to go with it uh, in a notebook. Um, so in this case, uh, we'll give it a collection number, which you simply write on the newspaper. Then that collection number refers to the notes in your notebook, and you can relate to later. It's very important that every plant has a collection number, because if somebody else comes along later and wants to refer to it, they'll refer to it as uh, Fuller Collection 24144 at University College London, or some such uh, equivalent herbarium. So once it's in the plant press, um, we simply put the press back together, and make it nice and flat and tight so that the, the specimen gets pressed 
and gets flat. Now, if you're collecting something like a tree or something with very large fruits, you may obviously not be able to put those in the press, uh, but you'd want to still press the, those parts you can and then label the wood specimen or large pine cones or other fruits with the same number so you can relate the two back to each other. So once we have it in the plant press, it's important to get it as tightly pressed as possible to help it stay flat and dry. So we get our plant press nicely closed up. And then you're ready to move on and collect your next specimen. Some plant specimens are rather more of a challenge to press. For example, this branch of Acacia camifera with its rather impressive spines, um, designed by evolution to prevent herbivory and also to foil botanists. But to not be foiled, we will still uh, manage to press it. And the idea is you want to try to flatten the specimens so that we can press the leaves and, of course, flatten the spines. For this, it's always helpful to have extra bits of cardboard in your plant press and some implement that's even tougher than the acacia with which we can flatten spine by spine the offending parts of the plant. specimen to take back for our reference collection, phytolith extraction, and also to confirm our identification of what the modern vegetation is like. <laughs> 